Hey, Bass Geek here, and don't miss out on fish like these. Or these. There we are. Gosh almighty, look at them just stacked up down here. Because somebody told you they're not active. That's right. I've made a ton of videos talking about how to catch these bass, these suspended bass on the ledges offshore, out deep, whatever you want to call it. Just like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Guys, I have caught a ton of these suspended bass. And I'm going to tell you what. I know a lot of people say, ah, oh, they're harder to catch. They're harder to catch maybe because you're not right, using the right tools for the job. Everyone and their mama has graphs now. Everyone and their mama is learning the offshore game. There's no secrets in fishing anymore, at least not offshore. So here's the deal. Those few bass that are suspended, everybody takes a pass on. They're not pressured like the ones that are stuck to the bottom like everyone tells you are the active fish. Summertime bass are pretty much always active. And if they're suspended up, they're suspended up for a reason. And most of the time, that reason is gonna be because the shad are higher in the water column. They are feeding, I can promise you. Now, the reason most people tell you that it's easier to catch those fish that are pinned to the bottom is because they're pinned to the bottom. You don't have to learn the rod reel line setup that you have. You don't have to learn rate of fall. You don't have to put a lot of time into it and a lot of work in understanding your, your setups and your baits. You throw something out like a big crankbait, it dredges bottom. You throw a jig, you drag it on bottom. You throw a Carolina rig, you drag it on bottom. You even throw a swim bait, which can be fished from top to bottom. What do you do? You put a big old weight on it, like an ounce, and you drag it on the bottom. So yeah, dragging on the bottom's a mindless game. But if you wanna catch those big fish, you better learn what I'm about to tell you in this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you six setups to catch and target these bass. Now guys, you're not gonna be able to do it overnight. If you're used to dragging on bottom and you're used to skipping these fish, you're gonna to have to go out and spend some time learning how to count these baits down, learning their fall rates, learning your gear, which means every time you change a rod, a reel, uh, the line on that combo, you have to understand the fall rate and how that affects that particular bait. That's why it's really good to buy you a setup for that particular bait or for a couple, three different baits and learn how to fish that bait on that particular setup with that particular line. You learn so much by repetitively using a combo with a certain amount of line and not changing all the time you understand how that setup is gonna work and you become in tune with that rod reel and line setup. So let's talk about the six presentations. Now, I will tell you on almost every single one of these presentations, I'm not gonna go into super in-depth about rod reel and line setup. I've got in-depth how-tos on almost every single one of these. And if I don't have an in-depth how-to on it, I will actually be doing one this summer Again, sorry guys, I've had to put in like 80 hour work weeks all through June. I've not been able to get out on the water as much as I like, but July should be shaping up to be a much better, July and August, a much better month. So you're gonna get to see some of this stuff actually in you know, the works out on the water. Anyway, all that being said, let's start with number six. Number six is the Alabama rig. Now you guys know I've got a ton of videos on this and it's basically the same thing. When I'm fishing an Alabama rig, I'm going to throw it out there, let it sink down to where I think the bass are, and I'm going to let it sink to right where they are or slightly up. Bass almost always are feeding up when they are suspended. So I want it maybe just a touch above them, 
And then I'm going to slow roll that. You're going to need to learn how to use that rod reel line combo to keep that bait from rising. It's going to be slow, I promise you. But the Alabama rig is probably number six because really during the summertime, that's one of the baits that I tend to only catch the smaller fish on. Now you can adjust the size of baits that you put on there to maybe draw in, draw in some bigger fish, which is something actually I'm gonna to try to do this year. I'm gonna test out some bigger baits on my Alabama rigs. Number five is actually a belly weighted fluke style bait. Now, guys, I'll use Bass Munitions, Stealth Shad. Uh, the biggest thing about this is you have to match the hatch, which means you're gonna use those. To me, 90% of the time, I want something a little bit bigger. Sometimes you can get on these lakes and they're chasing these little two and three inch um, thread fin or whatever shad is out there. My almost, my opinion on this is almost always, I wanna give them just a little bit bigger so it stands out, just a little bit bigger. So if they're chasing those threes, I'm probably gonna throw a five inch, like a stealth shad. Uh, one of the ones that I like a lot is the caffeine shad. Of course, the good old fluke. Now you'll have to belly weight these depending on how deep they go. Now, some of them, you know, you may have gizzard shad. They may be, uh, you know, really targeting these big gizzard shad and they make these magnum flukes and these magnum caffeine shads that you can throw out there and you don't really have to belly weight those, but you're gonna wanna put a big hook in them. Now, I don't have a video on this. I've actually done this in some videos, but as you're probably seeing right now, but uh, we'll definitely do a video on this as we go on uh, throughout the year. Now, number four, is gonna be a spoon. Guys, you just seen my spoon video. I've got several spoon videos out. You need to go watch those videos, guys. There's a lot of good information, a lot of good stuff. One of the things I love to do about a spoon, and a spoon is probably the hardest one because of the flutter of the fall, because I'm not letting this bait go to the bottom. I'm letting it sink down, and then I'm giving it two, three quick turns of the reel. I'm not giving it a slack line. I'm letting it sink down again, maybe even pendulum back, two, three quick cranks of the reel again. Now, one of the things that I've started doing last year, not sponsored by this company, is I've actually started using the crank wraps, the spoon wraps, and I'm telling you, in the clear water, and I haven't really got to test it in some dirtier water, but in the clear water, and like I say, most lakes clear up as you go through the summer, those crank wraps make a huge, huge difference. So make sure you go check them out. Again, links for everything in the bottom. Again, not, no affiliation with crank wraps whatsoever. I pay 110% of the price on those. But you wanna check those out for your spoons. It'll make a big difference. Number three is gonna be a swim bait. Now again, generally I'm gonna start out with that five or six. You know my go-to swim bait is the Bass Munitions Patriot Minnow, that five inch. I'm gonna put it on a half ounce head because that half ounce can be fished slowly on the bottom. And that's another thing you need to remember, guys, just because you see these fish up, it doesn't mean there's not more on the bottom that your electronics aren't showing you. Surprise, surprise, electronics aren't that good yet. If they're really sunk up to the bottom, you still won't see those fish all the time. So, I do, I will go out when I see suspended fish and I will drop it to the bottom and fish it real slow on the bottom. But again, we're talking about suspended bass. So one of the things you wanna do is learn the fall rate. And that half ounce head from ledge head gives that bait a great secondary action. Tons of videos about that, tons of fish catches everywhere you can imagine on a swim bait. From dirty water to clean water, I've done it. I love a swim bait, a swim bait is my crutch bait, that and the jig, you know it. And that half ounce size really allows you to be able to target those suspended fish much better. Now you can fish it on the bottom, like I said, uh, and I do all the time, in upwards of 30 feet. Once I get over 30 feet, I'm gonna go with something a little bit bigger. Don't like it at 30 feet, 25, 28, that's kind of my go. But anyway, we're talking about suspended bass again. 
Now, let's move on up to number two. And number two is gonna be one that you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. And I got, I was crazy. And I got ledge fishing, you know, for deep, top water ledge fishing for deep bass. I, people think I'm insane, but go watch this video and this video. All right, just go watch them. I show you the suspended bass. They're over, you know, a 30, I think the ledge is like 25 foot, the creek channel is 30 foot, and they're suspended up. Now this works best if you've got a little bit of water clarity. But guys, you really want a top water that's got a lot of glide to it. It's why I use the head and spook. Now in clear water, you guys have seen that color that I use, I can never remember, I'll put it up here. I can never remember it, but it's very translucent. So whatever you like to use, whatever your top water you know, walking bait that you like to use. My opinion is a one knocker, not a lot of rattle. It, to me, the calmer it is, the clearer it is, the more it needs to be just a pop, 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 and slow. Everybody that picks up a walking bait wants to throw it out there and just rip it back. No, if you're around small mouth or you're around spots, yes. But big, large mouth are like me. If you run that bait and they're 15 and 20 foot down and you run that bait over their head real fast, what they're going to do is they're going to come up and they're going to start to look for it. And as it passes over, they're going to go back down. They don't care. They're not going to chase it. But if you work that bait nice and slow, side to side, just nice and slow consistently, they're going to come up and they're just going to suck it in. Like I said, I got videos to prove it. Now, you're out on a little bigger lake, you got a little more chop, a little more dirty, that's when you look at your big pencil poppers. Your Berkeleys, your Evergreens, those sort of poppers, they walk, they stay in place, you can cast them a mile, that's the other key, because sometimes these bass are gonna be spread out. So what I like to do is kinda get with the wind, get with the current, and just let it drift me through and I'm making casts with that top water as I'm going. I'll spin back around and come back. I'll let that wind or let that current take me right through them and I'll make those casts as I'm going, going by. So I try to stay off the, the trolling motor as much as I possibly can. All right, number one, it's the underspin. And guys, I ain't talking about no little sissy underspin. Now, if they're chasing small fish, I love the Patriot Minnow 3.5, which is a bigger, it is way bigger, way bulkier, way more girth than say a Kitek. But it's a tighter wiggle. Now, I'll, I'll use that and I use that a lot and I catch a lot of fish on. But if I'm out and I'm around bigger bait fish, I'm using that three quarters ounce ledge head, that Tennessee River bling, and I'm using a five or six, ounce, six inch swim bait on it. Of course, you know, the five inch Patriot Minnow, which is actually six inches long if you hold the tail out. Anyway, everybody's got their own measurement method. But that is my favorite go-to on that. Now I use a three quarters. I may go to a half depending on how suspended they are but if i want to get it on the bottom i use a three quarters because now you've got a lot more plastic and you've got a bigger blade so you're going to get more lift out of it so that three quarters helps keeps it help keeps helps to keep the bait down whoa so it helps keep that bait down but if you're fishing for them suspended that half ounce might be just a little bit better depending on how high in the water column they actually are if I was keeping it around 15, 20, maybe go with that half ounce. Other than that, that three eighths, or not three eighths, I'm sorry, three quarters ounce is going to be my go-to. I've probably been saying three eighths ounce this whole time. Three quarters or half ounce. That's the two sizes I'm gonna tell you uh, to use. Anyway, like I said, my mouth ain't working right. It just, just is what it is. But number one, guys, that is a great, great tool is the underspin. It is so underutilized in ledge fishing. You can go back again and see all kinds of videos where I use the underspin. I've been using it for years. 
but that's my number one tool. Generally, I'm gonna pick that up first. If I see them suspended, that's the first thing I'm firing out there. That and the swim bait are gonna be first. And uh, you know, who don't like top water, so why not fire top water out there and see what happens? After that, we're gonna start using some spoons because just like lower, uh, just like the fish that are on the bottom, sometimes you gotta throw that spoon in there, that reactionary bait to get that school fired up. I've I've thrown that bait in there. I've thrown a swim bait in before, not got a nibble, thrown a spoon in there, had them hit it two or three times, followed up with the swim bait, catch fish. You got to get them fired up, guys. It ain't no different than the fish stuck to the bottom. Got to get them fired up. All right, guys, this is a short, sweet, simple, well, maybe not so short. Simple, simple deal. I've been doing it for years. Don't pass these fish up. They're way less pressured. And even though everybody tells you they're easier, they're not as easy to catch, I beg to differ. All right. Anyway, as always, questions and comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk about fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so these notifications come. So when these notifications come out, you get the notifications and you get to watch. Guys, I appreciate the growth we've had. It's been incredible. I appreciate all you old heads, all you Bass Geek Nation out there. Man, you guys have supported this channel more than anything I could have ever asked. So much love to the Bass Geek Nation. And as always, you guys rock.